Uh, hello? Hi Kenny, you okay? Hey, can you hold on? I'm taking a picture for someone. Okay, no worries. Thanks. Oh, that's no problem. You, that's no problem. You take your time. As, as you know, um, I'm uh, Thomas Lyons from uh, Raps on TV, and uh, we're just going to do a short exclusive interview with you. Um, so, obviously, it's a privilege to be talking to you this morning, uh, having such an established world elite level trainer, uh, but most importantly, the father of Sean on board is great uh, for boxing, especially in the UK, so we appreciate your time dearly. Um, are you enjoying your time in Sheffield at the moment? Very good. Uh, London, Sheffield, uh, Manchester, uh, Manchester, everywhere that we've been, I've had a great time. Yeah, we well, appreciate you coming over from the US. You certainly brought the weather with you. Yeah, everybody says that. <laughs> everybody says that. Just can't. Yeah, so... Um, yeah, uh, now before we uh, go on to talk about, obviously, the uh, situation with the uh, WBC, I'm sure you've... Uh, heard about the uh, interim belt and stuff. Um, I'm sure you were aware of uh, what happened in Manchester on uh, Monday night. Obviously a culmination of uh, appalling and uh, barbaric scenes that shot so the entire population really was affected by it. Um, of course our deepest uh, condolences go to the uh, families of the victims that got caught up in the atrocity. Um, obviously there's no words to describe what happened. So I just wanted to ask you, uh, Kenny, being in Sheffield this week following the events on Monday, have you uh, gathered a sense of unity and togetherness among the people in Sheffield? A sense of what, please? A uh, sense of unity and togetherness among the people of Sheffield. Oh, absolutely, absolutely, absolutely. Uh, everywhere we've gone, uh, people have reached out to us, open arms and welcoming and they spoke of the unity and they spoke of being kind and courteous and uh, being uh, as one, you know what I mean? Yeah. People have, have, you know, Sean actually met a couple of different, two different, two different guys, two different places. One did some poetry, he did poetry and his poetry that he did was all about uh, coming together and, 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 and working together and being uh, brothers and sisters. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, and, and then we went to another shop, you know, 20, maybe an hour later, and, and uh, a guy in there, he says, hey, can I, can I rap for you, Sean? And he did the same thing, and his was all about, uh, you know, us thinking of each other and caring about each other and and yeah, so, so. Well, that's a great touch from you and uh, Sean Kenny. Um, obviously, Sheffield, Sheffield is uh, referred to the as as uh, the Steel City, as they call it. So obviously, you have brought the sense of unity. Um, what do they call it? The Steel City of Sheffield. Like, like the metal steel. Yeah, like the metal steel. Yeah. Okay, like the precious metal. Okay. Yeah. Uh, the news last night and the queen went to visit some of the uh, the victims some of the people that were injured yeah. at the hospital 
Yes, yeah, so um, obviously moving on, um, sort of, I wanted to focus the interview on the uh, WBC situation. Obviously, it's uh, suggested that the uh, WBC governing body may order an interim title fight due to Keith Thurman picking up an injury uh, to his elbow and having to undergo surgery, um, which will keep him postponed until the end of the year. I just wanted to ask, how did the... Um, how did the WBC get in touch with you, or did they get in touch with you? And uh, did Mauricio Solomon directly contact you regarding the position Keith was in? No, they have not. We have not been contacted due to uh, time uh, changing the, uh, the difference in time of the United States and, and here. We haven't been contacted and spoken to anyone in regards to this at all. Okay, so it's just uh, speculations then. Yeah, the, the information that we're receiving at this time is just what's coming on the internet. Okay. That quoted, he was quoted as saying that he was going to uh, move forward with an interim title fight. Yeah. And Sean being the mandatory, Sean would be one of the fighters yeah, of course, in that yeah. fight. Okay. Just wanted to clear that up because obviously it was, um, I was just reading an article from. Uh, BoxingScene.com, and they were just saying about how uh, Mauricio Solomon was uh, talking to ESPN, I think it was ESPN, and sort of saying that obviously due to Keith's inactivity until the uh, end of the year, that it was necessary to impose an interim title fight. But obviously, Sean will be mandatory for the WBC, obviously, after the Alberto uh, win. And um, yeah, I just wanted to sort of clear up any uncertainties about the WBC situation. Um, so yeah, at, this, at this time, we don't have any any information other than what you're probably reading. Okay, that's all we have. No worries. So obviously, as we have seen with the uh, other governing organisations, certain exceptions and permissions have been made to ensure that the uh, champions receive the fairest representation of the belt, and as they deserve. Um, obviously with injuries and operations and so on um, some of these fighters may be more inactive than others we've sort of had the likes of Tyson Fury, Billy Joe Saunders in the UK who haven't fought for a very long time and have obviously kept their uh, world titles so do you sort of see this as like holding the belts hostage do you think that maybe tougher um, maybe tougher uh, in like uh, restrictions should be given to the fighters. Obviously, they with injuries and stuff. This boxing uh, things happen for obviously in between fights. And do you think that maybe this sort of branding of holding the belts hostage is a fair sort of reflection? Well, in this particular situation, uh, I can only speak to this situation. Uh, I don't. I don't think that a uh, guy's title should be taken away from him due to injury. Yeah. I believe he should be given an a, a appropriate amount of time, a reasonable amount of time to come back from that injury, in, injury and defend the title. So I think the right thing to do is to make an interim championship, and that is the best route to go in this particular situation. And moving, and moving forward, uh, I would suggest that they consider that to be the first line of defense uh, for the champion instead of, uh, you know, forcing him to come back too soon, uh, you know, make, making uh, a, a, a judgment that maybe he's not injured and, and taking and stripping his title. I think that should be the first thing that should be done. Uh, yeah. Offer a interim title. Okay. So um, the article also said that uh, Suleiman does not want to have the division put on hold, obviously, while Thurman recovers. What's your thoughts on that? Do you think that, obviously, um, by the time Thurman gets back, he's also said himself that he doesn't want to sort of jump straight back in at the deep end, sort of obviously having the calcium deposits taken out of his right elbow. Do you think he maybe needs a warm-up fight, or do you think he can just um, jump straight in with the likes of Sean... And uh, Garcia, do you think he needs maybe a warm-up fight or so? No, I wouldn't. 
wouldn't suggest that if he's healthy enough to fight, then he's healthy enough to fight. If it if it was me and I was his trainer, I wouldn't want him to take a fight and maybe injure himself in the fight. Yeah. If he's healthy enough to fight, then I would project the date, the time that he's healthy enough to fight and move forward. Okay. Um, so obviously, um, the current WBC mandatory challenger is Sean, and um, obviously he's uh, he emphatically knocked out uh, Berto in his last fight, and obviously he's made progressive steps um, through the um, through the division, and obviously projected his status at world level. He's always been around world level, obviously since the Kelbrook defeat and since the uh, fight of the year candidate. In the Furman fight, Sean's obviously showed that he's made progressive steps in reclaiming those uh, belts. Um, there's also been speculation that maybe the super lightweight champion Terence Crawford might be mand- uh, might be in line for a sort of shot at the uh, interim belt. Uh, what's your thoughts on that? situation is another one that I think they would have to address with uh, the number two guy being Danny Garcia and possibly even address with Amir Khan because those guys are you know uh, established at 147 and to move them out of the way for someone from a different weight class would be unfair yeah so, uh, what would your preference be out of uh, Garcia, Crawford, and Khan? Who would you like to see Sean fight next? Our preference is Keith Thurman. Okay. First, second, our first, second, and third preference is Keith Thurman. If we can't have Keith Thurman, we'll take the former WBC champion, which is Danny Garcia. Yeah. And uh, I think he definitely deserves the right to fight for his title. Well, I, cer- I certainly believe Sean deserves the rematch. Uh, the first fight was a enthralling fight. I-, I personally had it as my fight of the year candidate. Obviously, Garcia lost to Thurman in his last fight. So, um, yeah, just the mix in general was just very uh, hotly contested. I think any of those fights would be great fights for the fans. So, um, I suppose we'll just have to sort of see where the uh, politics and the decision-making goes from here. Um, yes. Another question I just wanted to ask you, uh, Kenny, was that um, do you think it's plausible to give, um, obviously, Crawford being the unified champion at 140, uh, 140 pounds, do you think it's uh, plausible to give him a shot at a 147 pound title straight away? Or do you think he needs to earn his sort of, once he moves up to 147, does he need to earn his strides in the uh, welterweight division? Again, just what, what I, I, I previously said, I believe that I don't believe anybody should move up from another weight class and overtake the guys that have been established there fighting for the championships there or fighting for the number one, two, and three spots. Uh, I, I don't agree with that. That, that to me, is um, just like uh, stripping the guy of his title when he's injured. You know, these guys... There's nothing wrong with these guys. These guys are healthy. These guys are ready to go. They fought their way to get these positions, and now they're ready to 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 take on Keith or whoever it might be. And unfortunately, Keith has an injury. So now, you know, that puts them in line to fight for the interim title. I don't think it's it's a, uh, a fair situation to move someone else in who has not been there. Yeah, abs- absolutely. Um, so Crawford, um, obviously, is a proven champion at 140 pounds. Great champion. Great champion. Great champion. Um, because obviously there is other unification fights that he can have. Obviously, you have Julius and Dongo, who recently beat um, Scotland's Ricky Burns for the uh, unified super lightweight championships. Do you think maybe he should uh, target that fight and maybe kind of clean up at 140 before he moves up to fight the likes of? Pacquiao, Sean, the likes of all these uh, elite fighters? No, I think he's earned the right to fight Pacquiao. Yeah. I believe he's earned the right to fight Pacquiao, yes. 
Because obviously Pacquiao's uh, occupied with uh, Jeff Horn at the moment, but there's no reason why right, that. Right, right. Yeah. Uh, I, I don't. I don't know what uh, Ricky, um, what what Burns' status is as far as when he's expected to fight again, or if he's already got someone to fight. But I think that's a great fight. Yeah. Definitely. So um, obviously, you and Sean have been in uh, Sheffield for some time now. How's the uh, experience been being over in the UK? Is it uh, much more like um, what's the atmosphere compared to like in the build up to US fights obviously you were part of the um, well you were obviously um, involved in um, a lot of world title fights in the US it's, I'm not sure is this your first time to the UK this is our first time to the UK we have thoroughly enjoyed it uh, we want to come back uh, we would love to fight here that would be a, uh, a goal to fight here in the UK yeah. before Sean's career is done. Um, uh, we're looking forward to coming back. That's great. How do um, how does the uh, pre-fight antics compare with the uh, US scheme of uh, building up fights? Do you think there's a much more sort of... Like, how would you compare the uh, atmosphere of the sort of pre-build up to uh, fights in the UK to the US? Uh, it's been great. It's been great. I think that uh, Eddie Hearn and his company have done an, an absolutely fabulous job. Uh, I've been very impressed with everything. Uh, very, very professional. And uh, I really enjoyed yesterday's press conference. I'm looking forward to today's weigh-ins. And uh, the build-up is, is great. It's been, it's been great. Brilliant. Glad to hear that you're enjoying yourself. Um, how uh, the, the guys from the uh, Raps on TV team just wanted to ask, um, how long were you actually going to be staying in the UK for? Are you going to be flying back out to the US after the Brooks Spence fight, or do you plan on staying for maybe an extent? Yes, we, we, we have other obligations. Uh, Sean and I will depart uh, the Sunday the morning after the fight. We will depart and. Uh, be home in Las Vegas just for about five days before we depart for New York and the Boxing Hall of Fame is inducting Sean's outfit that he fought Andre Berto in into the Boxing Hall of Fame. So we will be flying there for an uh, induction for his outfit. Brilliant. That's great. Um, yeah, that's wonderful. So, obviously, you do intend to come back to the UK um, sometime, maybe, whether that's to uh, fight. Um, obviously, there is quite a lot of um, talented welterweights in the UK currently. We have the likes of Sam Eggington, who just uh, recently won the European um, welterweight title off of Seferino Rodriguez. Obviously, he also beat the uh, fellow American uh, Paulie Malignaggi. So, how do you sort of assess the um, current... Um, group of uh, welterweights in the UK do you think there's any maybe fights that interest you between those sort of fighters honestly I haven't had an opportunity to look at Eggington I did hear about his win over uh, Marlon Ajay but I haven't had a chance to look at him and uh, I haven't had a chance to <clears throat> look at any of the other uh, welterweights of course I know very well Kilbrook and I know very well uh, Amir Khan. Yeah. Uh, I know Amir per I know Amir personally, and we have gone up against uh, Brooke. Uh, but uh, some of the fighters that uh, I'm familiar with and that I've watched more: uh, George Groves, Anthony Joshua, uh, of course, uh, the young man uh, from Belfast. Uh, Cole Frampton. Yes, I was with Frampton this week in his gym, and yeah. then, uh, of course, he, he stayed at our, our place uh, when he was in the States. He stayed at our place for a month. Brilliant. So, um, finally, Kenny, I just wanted to uh, ask, so obviously for you and Sean, I saw at the uh, press conference for the uh, Berto fight that uh, Sean was talking about sort of how much it would mean to win the WBC belt. Um, it's been a lifelong ambition and dream of his. So what would it mean to you guys to win the prestigious belt? And how would it rank in 
sort of like how would it rank in your um, previous achievements uh, being with Sean through the amateurs and professional ranks well my thing is uh, if Sean is if, if Sean is uh, if he has his gear towards the uh, WC belt then that's the direction that I, I will get behind him or support him on and uh, we will obtain that goal Brilliant. So, um, obviously, you were in the studio with the uh, Raps on TV team earlier this week. Um, what do you have to say about the guys? Did you enjoy their interview? And do you think um, we are covering boxing in the uh, correct fashion? No, I think you guys are doing a great job. I had a great time with those guys. Uh, it was uh, it was wonderful to, to be in the studio. Uh, you know, I, I, I really enjoyed every moment that I've spent here in the UK. And, of course, those guys have become lifelong friends to me. I expect to see them again when I come back here, come back to their show. And, uh, I expect when they come to the States for anything, if they're anywhere near Las Vegas, Nevada, I expect them to be my guests as well. Well, it's been a pleasure to have you, uh, Kenny. Um, would you mind doing a few quick-fire questions um, just from the guys? They just wanted to ask, um, who is currently your favourite fighter and who was uh, your favourite fighter? So, fi favourite fighter from past and present. Currently, my favourite fighter would be... Sean Porter. <laughs> of course. Yeah, absolutely. Muhammad Ali was the number one. Uh, Mike Tyson is definitely in, in that uh, thought process. In fact, the Holyfield, who I know personally, uh, Marvin Hagler, those are some of my top guys. Muhammad Ali, Sugar Ray Leonard. And uh, who is the... Uh, who is the uh, toughest... Who is the uh, toughest... Uh, uh, who's the uh, toughest opponent that Sean's faced in the amateur and uh, professional ranks? Who would you say is the toughest opponent that Sean's faced? Uh, I would say his toughest opponent was, was Danny Jacobs from New York. They fought quite a few times. And they had some legendary instant classic fights. And that would be his toughest. Uh, and in the professional ranks, I would say to this point, Keith Thurman. Yeah. So, um, obviously, we've seen the likes of uh, Javante Davis come over to the UK, but he beat uh, Liam Walsh last week to um, retain his title. Who would you say is the best young up-and-coming prospect? This can either be from the US or from the UK. Who would you say is the best up-and-coming prospect? Errol Spence. So you're favouring him for Saturday night then? So um, just to finish things off, Kenny, it's been an absolute pleasure to talk to you. Um, give us your final prediction for Saturday night. How do you see the fight unfolding? Uh, I see Earl Spence going from up-and-coming prospect to top contender to world champion on Saturday night. Brilliant. Sweet and simple. <laughs> It's um it's been an honour to uh, talk to you today, Kenny, and um, I wish you all the best with your uh, time, your remaining time in uh, the UK. I hope you uh, have a splendid uh, time at the boxing on Saturday, and uh, we look forward to hearing you uh, from you and Sean in the future. Obviously, I'll tell the uh, uh, Raps on TV team and the uh, fight fans that will tune in to uh, follow at Showtime Sean Porter on Twitter, Instagram, and all social media platforms. So um, if you have any questions to ask Kenny, feel free, but it's uh, been an absolute privilege to talk to you today. Yes, I got it. It's been great talking to you as well. And they can follow me at Kenny Porter on Facebook and also...
also a Porter High Performance on Instagram, which is Porter H Y Performance on Instagram. And uh, will you be making it out to the fights or to the weigh-in? Yeah, absolutely. Uh, we're going to be trying to get to as many of the fight. Um, no, actually, um, I think there is a few of the team that are heading up to Sheffield today. Um, so I think we'll have uh, some of the guys there. So hopefully they'll be able to catch up with you. Well, if you if you're able to make it uh, to the fights, you should be able to find us uh, because there'll be a crowd of people around Sean. Yeah. Please come over and say hello. Yeah, brilliant, brilliant, Kenny. Thanks very much for your time. Thank you so much. All the best. Take care. Bye.